Hello everybody. Welcome back to my kitchen. I am super excited to be back with you guys. I apologize, first of all, that it's been a little bit since I um, uploaded some new content. I have been thinking about it. I have been missing my time sharing with you, but today is day 20 of bronchitis for non-toxic for mom. So I have not been sick probably in about, hmm, almost five years um, since we changed how we do things in our house and we have a more non-toxic lifestyle. I haven't been sick, but something got a hold of me. I'm thankful it wasn't COVID, but let me tell you, it was horrible. But I'm thankful to be as healthy as I am because I still think I would be battling it. So today's day 20 and I finally feel like getting up. I'm not going to cough hopefully the whole time I talk to you. And I felt like doing some content and it was perfect timing because I am out of bone broth. So today in my kitchen, we are going to make bone broth. All right. So I want you to grab a cup of coffee and count your blessings. Um, look at my new coffee area, by the way. Do you guys love this? This is my happy place. In the morning, I sit here and I do my quiet time and my Jesus time and I have my cup of coffee and it's dark except for the twinkly lights and I love it. Do you love it? I love it. I love my coffee area. So um, grab a cup of joe. Mm. Mm. And I want you to join me um, and I'm gonna show you how I make my bone broth. So I know that there are a gazillion YouTube videos on making bone broth, so I'm not doing anything probably unique, um, but I hope maybe some of you who are new to um, Jamie Jan, non-toxic pharma, will follow along and that this will be something that you can do, okay? So you don't have to have a farm like me, you don't have to have your own chickens or your own garden to do bone broth, but you can do it <clears throat> and spend, sorry, excuse me, I told you I wasn't going to cough and I started to cough. You can do it so much less expensive than buying bone broth at the store and you control what goes in it and you can make it super, super, super healthy. So I am going to show you what I've got laid out here. And I'm going to show you how easy it is and how I do bone broth. And I hope that you will take the plunge. So if you've been holding on to those turkey bones since Thanksgiving, now is the time to pull them out of the freezer. Um, or maybe you cook some chicken before Thanksgiving. Any bones you might have, okay? Um, pull them out because we're going to get started. And I'm going to tell you that I save my bones all year long. Okay. So if I make chicken and I throw it in the um, slow cooker or the Instant Pot or in the oven, I save my bones. I put them in a Ziploc bag. I throw them in the freezer and I do the same thing with my vegetables. <coughs> Excuse me. So do the same things. It, you can control what goes in here and you guys can make it however you want, okay? So if you're, even if you're making just chicken stock or, or bone broth from chicken or turkey bones or even beef bones, you probably want some vegetable parts in there. So I save my carrot peelings, I save my celery, if I've used celery, onions, garlic, whatever I have, <coughs> I throw them in the crock or I throw them in the freezer and I pull them out when I'm ready to make my stock, okay, or my broth. So here we go. Okay, so before we put this all in the pot, I want to show you what I have here that we are going to use in this chicken or turkey bone broth. This will be turkey bone broth, okay? So I like to use a slow cooker um, and I like to let it cook for like 24 hours I like so I usually start it at night or in the evening let it go all day or all night and then I work on it the next evening so I've already thrown my turkey carcass in here okay so you can see that we actually fried our turkey this year that's fine don't worry about how it was um cooked you'll also see that there's still some skin and some pieces of meat on here it's okay 
because we are going to skim that all off before I actually put it into jars. Um, the, if you, um, roast your bone or roast your chicken, or if you do it in like a boiling water, what, however you cook it, just save your bones. Most of the time there'll be less meat on it than what I have, but I do not like to waste anything. And this turkey, um, came from our farm. We hatched him from an egg. We raised him all the way. He was our Thanksgiving dinner <clears throat> and here on the farm, we do not like to waste anything. So we are gonna use his bones. Um, there may be a little more fat than I would have liked. So um, I will show you how I do the, skim that off. But once it's cooled, you can skim the fat off of the top, okay? So we have bones, we have vegetables. Okay, so these are actually carrots that are from my garden. I just went out and pulled them. Typically, I have carrot tops and bottoms. Um, and the, sh like if I've, um, peeled them, the peelings, and I just throw them in the freezer and keep them. But I have already made bone broth once <laughs> this fall and we have gone through it all. Um, so I didn't have that luxury. So I'm going to put the carrot pieces and I'm actually going to put the carrot tops. Look how beautiful these are. I'm kind of proud of these. You guys, I grew these in my garden. This is gorgeous. I still have a bunch more out there too. Okay. So we're going to do carrots. We're going to do rosemary. I love rosemary, so many beneficial healing properties in rosemary, go look it up. Onion, I like onion in mine, okay? Usually, I have garlic, but you know what? We're winging it and I was out of garlic, so no garlic this time. Okay, I have more bones over here that I'm gonna throw in. So this crock pot is basically, actually it's an Instapot, but we're gonna use the, the slow cooker mode on this. Um, <clears throat> It's gonna be filled with one entire turkey that we, all the bones from the turkey that we had for Thanksgiving. Okay, now, important, important, important. <laughs> if you can get them, feet, you guys. This is super important. If you ever looked at um, somebody's bone broth, you want bone broth that gels. I know some people that grosses out, but when it is cool, it should look like gelatin, okay? That means it has good stuff in it, okay? So it's gonna, it's literally going to pull out the good stuff from the bones, okay? From the marrow, from inside. And it's, the feet have that in it as well, okay? If you can, I often will chop off the end of a toe too, just to help, but it's going to pull out all the good stuff. I promise. Okay. So we're going to put these four um, feet in. All right. These were in the freezer too. I just throw my feet in the freezer and you're probably thinking, Jamie, I don't have chickens. I don't have turkeys. I definitely don't have feet. You can buy feet. Okay. Go to the meat counter. You can buy feet if they're not already prepackaged. I saw some a few weeks ago, even at Walmart, but you can ask for them. Um, but go to your local butcher even and ask, okay? That's what I would prefer to do because I know um, locally here, the local farmers and what they feed their chickens and their turkeys is so much better than what you're gonna find in the store. Okay, you're gonna need some apple cider vinegar. This is a super important thing, okay? Ingredient thing, ingredient. Okay, you want the, the non-GMO organic, you want it with the mother in it, okay? And you're not going to use very much, just a couple of glugs, but this is important because this is going to pull all those nutrients and all that goodness out of these bones and make it a super healthy broth. And then whatever seasonings you want. I usually use pink Himalayan salt, but again, I'm out. So I'm going to use just sea salt and I'm going to use some black pepper. Okay, we're going to grind that up and then just water and that's what you need okay so this is what i use for my stock i would obviously add some garlic if i had it what other herbs if you have um sage some people like to put sage um bay leaves whatever okay celery is usually something i put in mine i didn't have that this time so that's what i love about making my own bone broth is you can use what you've got, okay? Same if you're just doing vegetable stock, okay? Save all your vegetables and just make a really healthy vegetable bone broth or stock from your scraps. You can do that. All right, so here we go. It's really just a matter of putting all this stuff into the pot. 
Okay, so I've got my rosemary. I'm not even going to cut that. I washed it. I'm just going to put it in the pot. All right, let me slide this over here so I can get everything in my picture so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to throw my carrots into the pot. All right, this guy needs to thaw a little bit. I think he's too big for my pot. All right, we're going to throw the rest of the, the turkey bones in here. Uh oh. Oh, ah! Look, I feel like, um, okay, I'm going to date myself, but Pebbles and Bam Bam, look, he's like a big turkey bone. All right, so some of this I might have to fit in here a little bit later, okay, after it thaws. All right, and then we are going to chop up this onion. You do not have to be neat and tidy about it, all right? You can even put the butts in. That's what I love. Most of the time, most of the time my stuff is just, my stock, my broth is literally just made with um, the butts, the pieces of my vegetables. There is still plenty of goodness in there, okay? So we're just gonna throw it in. You guys notice I'm not even taking the peel off, okay? We're just gonna toss it in. Um, doesn't have to be small pieces. All right, so we're gonna toss that all in. All right, <clears throat> we're gonna put, I am gonna cut this because I don't think this will fit. So we're gonna put some the carrot tops in. So much goodness. Oh, you guys, it's so fun and just so rewarding to make your own bone broth. And it's so super good for you. It's good for your gut. It's good for your immune system. We all know that our immune system is like a second, or our gut is like a second immune system. It's so good for you, okay? I know you can't see my face, but it, I'm just, it's so good. I like to drink it warm. I like to cook with it. You can make soups with it. Whatever you would do stock with, okay? These are obviously clean chicken feet, okay? <laughs> make sure they're clean if you process your own chickens. We're gonna just toss them in here like this, like so. All right, and then it's just a matter of adding some water. Okay, so here is the kicker. You want just enough water to cover all of your bones. All right, I think I'm out of the camera, so you're just hearing my voice. All right, I gotta get back into practice, don't I? Okay, so we're gonna put all of that in. Let me move my cutting board because we are finished. I'm gonna slide my Instapot. This happens to be like an off-brand Instapot <laughs> that my husband got me a few years ago. It doesn't really work very well as an Instapot, but it is 10 quarts and it has a slow cooker option. So I love it for making broths and um, soups because I can just let it cook overnight. All right, let me grab my towel because I can't get the lid off. Okay, so here is my handy dandy apple cider vinegar. This is actually just the Aldi brand of their organic non-GMO um, apple cider vinegar, whatever you have on hand. This is a super important ingredient. Don't forget this ingredient, okay? And we're going to just go like this. Do you like my measuring? Glug, 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 glug. I just pour some in, okay? This is important because it is going to pull out all of those really good, nutritious things that our body needs out of these bones, okay? So, and then I just add some salt and pepper. Oops, let's use this side. This is just some coarse, some coarse salt. Some coarse salt, sorry. That didn't look like salt, but it was. This is coarse sea salt. Again, I like to use pink Himalayan sea salt if I have it. I did not realize we were out before I wanted to start this product project. And like I said, we are out of stock, so I really needed to get some. I don't even know if this will go into the canner. Usually I can it, but um, I drank a whole bunch while I was sick, and we use it to cook in all the time. So... Um, <laughs> I used a lot between Thanksgiving and Christmas and we have run out. Okay, so I'm gonna top this off with water and then we are gonna be ready to plug it in and let it go. All right, look, here it is. Okay, I have everything in this pot. Can you guys see? Mm. All right, so my 10 quart pot is completely filled with turkey bones, carrots, onions, carrot tops, rosemary, um, what else did we put in here? 
um, chicken feet or turkey feet and water and organic apple cider, non-GMO apple cider vinegar with the mother, okay? So it's in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in. I'm going to set it for 24 hours and then we will come back and look at it. We might take a sneak peek. It's gonna make the kitchen smell so wonderful and it is a rainy, 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 rainy day here. So this is the perfect day to do this. Um, and this will make a lot of broth. Now, I will be making more throughout the year. This is one of my favorite things to make for my family, you guys, and it's so easy. So I hope when you see how easy it is, you will give it a try, okay? I will put in the comments or in the description, I will put everything I use. Um, remember, you don't have to have your own farm. Remember, I am sharing tips and tricks to have a non-toxic life from my little farm, but you don't have to have a farm, okay? I want to share budget-friendly things for you, and this is one of those things that any family can do, and I really believe every family should do. Yes, you can buy your stock, okay? You can buy it, but this will save you money. You will have the satisfaction of knowing you did this for your family from the scraps, right? You didn't waste anything. Um, so you're gonna be showing your family, sorry, you guys, everybody always tries to contact me when I'm making my YouTube videos, but you can show your kids, you can show your family how easy it is to do healthy things without a lot of money, but from the things you already have, okay? So as you are cooking, I want to encourage you as you are making meals or cooking for your family, save those bones, save those veggie scraps, okay? If you're at the store and you see some chicken feet, pick them up, okay? Or maybe you have a friend who is a local farmer or you know the small farmers in your area, contact them, okay? They will be super glad that you did I mean, I'm not saying that they're gonna give them to you for free, okay? Support your local farmers, okay? They need you to support them. Um, so if they ask you to buy the chicken feed or if they ask you to buy the bones, buy them, okay? Because you're helping support local farmers um, and we need that <clears throat> more than ever. Okay, so this already smells good and it hasn't even started cooking. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to let it start cooking. I will be back. We'll sporadically check on this so you can see how it's doing. Um, drop your comments below. Ask questions. Okay, I want to know: Have you ever made your own stock? How did it go? Um, do you drink bone broth on a regular basis? What do you add to your bone broth that I might not add to mine? I want to learn from you and I want you to learn from me. Um, this is a give and take relationship. We are gonna have so much fun together. This is such a fun journey. I am so blessed by those of you that have subscribed. So if you are finding us for the first time, please subscribe, help us grow our channel. We have so many fun things we wanna share with you straight from our little bit of Faith Farm. Um, help you have non-toxic ideas on a budget for you and your family. All right, we'll be back. I'm gonna get this going. Okay, you guys, it has been 24 hours. So I had the bone broth in my Instapot on slow cooker mode for 20 hours because that's all the timer would allow me to set it for. And then I let it stay in the warming mode for a few more hours. So it smells so amazing. It is done and I can't wait for you to see how beautiful this bone broth is. And so I am going to show you, I strain out all the bones and all the vegetables um, and then we have our broth. And what I'm going to do with this batch, um, you don't have to do this, especially if your bones don't have very much meat on them or skin. But I showed you that I used the turkey from Thanksgiving and so it wasn't as cleaned off. Um, so there's going to be some fat content in this broth. And so what I'm going to do this time around is I'm going to put it in glass bowls and I'm gonna stick it in the refrigerator um, overnight. And then tomorrow that fat will be on the top and I will be able to skim it off 
and then I will have some bone broth ready to go. I like to can, I like to pressure can my bone broth. So if you decide that you want to keep it and make sure that it's shelf stable, you're going to have to use a pressure cooker, okay? So I like to can it in quart sized jars if I have them. Um, because we go through a lot of it. Um, I probably will end up this time using some pint sized jars too. We use it for soups and, um, and for casseroles and things that we cook with, but I also like to drink it during the winter. Um, but I can't wait to show you this. I know it's going to like gel. Remember you want it to gel up. I know some people get grossed out by that, but you want it to gel because that means that his taken all of those amazing, good, nutritious properties out of the bones like it's supposed to, out of the feet. It's soaked everything out and you'll get a nice gelatinous um, broth. But then when you heat it up, that goes away. But it means you have all the good stuff in it, okay? So I'm super excited for you guys to see this. I can't wait for you. I wish you could smell it. I wish we had like a smell aroma, you know, a, a sniff and scratch sticker, um, but we don't. So you'll just have to take my word for it or you're gonna have to make some of your own so you can give it a try and just do what I'm saying. You're gonna fall in love with it, okay? And I really, really wasn't hard. I know some people prefer to do it on their stove and you can do that. You can throw everything into a big pot just let it simmer. Um, I like to use my slow cooker because I can just put it there and forget about it and I can let it go for 24 hours. I usually don't let it go for more than 24 hours um, because then it starts to kind of burn um, and you don't want that either. Okay. All right. So I can't wait for you to see it. All right. Here it is. Look how beautiful. Can you see how dark it is? <gasps> and it smells it's so good. Okay, so I actually ended up putting some of it into jars. I ended up with one, two, three, four, five quarts here. And this is another quart. So we ended up with six quarts of broth out of that big pot. That's pretty good. So what I'm going to do, normally I would just go ahead and can it. Um, and it's okay to can it. Here, let me show you really quick. Here, let me grab one of my little jars. Okay, so you can already see, I don't know if you can see or not, up here, there is some fat. This is gonna happen in regular bone broth too. Even if you have most of the bones completely clean, you're gonna get a little bit of fat. If you are using this only for cooking purposes, you guys, this is good flavor. Good fat, good flavor. You can pour it into your soups, use it just like you would a stock that you would buy from the store, but this is so much healthier. Okay, you know where, hopefully, you know where your bones came from, um, where what the chickens were fed. You are putting your own vegetables and herbs in it. It's your ingredients. It's very wholesome. It's very healthy. So the fat is okay to cook with. If you are going to use this as um, a bone broth that you're just going to heat up and drink, I prefer not to have the fat content in it. So I'm going to put some of it in the refrigerator so that tomorrow the fat I can just scoop right off. Okay. And I will do it probably in this big this will be much easier to scoop. So I'm gonna pour some of this back in here. And then I have bone broth that I can just drink. And I like to just heat it up just like you would a can of soup, right? Um, good for colds, good for flus, good for viruses, good for your gut, okay? It's very, very healing. Um, bone broth is amazing, whether it's chicken or turkey or beef, okay? You can make beef, beef bone broth the same way. Go to your butcher and get those beef bones to be able to do that. So this is how I make bone broth for our family. Um, and we use it, like I said, to cook with, we drink it. It's super healthy, helps your immune system. So hopefully you were able to learn something um, new that's super easy, an easy way for you to do something um, healthy and non-toxic for, for your family, right? Um, it was pretty little work. I mean, besides the fact that I'm going to can it, pressure can it tomorrow, but all of these jars will fit into my pressure canner. So it's just one batch and I'll be done. But it's, it's not a lot of work. It's, I think some people get scared because they think making my own bone broth, that's, that sounds time consuming. That sounds scary. You can see I threw it all in a pot. I keep it in the freezer ahead of time. So as you're, you know, as you're cooking chicken, just throw those bones in 
a bag, throw them in the freezer. Same with your veggies. And remember I told you yesterday um, when I was getting this all ready to put in the pot, it is just the tops, the skins, the peels. You can use anything that you have. Put it in the freezer and then just pull it out, add the water. Don't forget that, um, or the organic apple cider vinegar with the mother in it, okay? Um, that really helps pull out all of the good stuff that you're gonna get from those bones and those veggies. So that's really all it is. In the description below, I will put everything I did, what I used, links if you need jars, links if you need a slow cooker, my favorite one. I will put those links below, but don't overthink this. Don't make it hard. I can't wait to hear that you have tried your own to make your own bone broth, and I want you to share that with us in the comments, or maybe you've already done it and you did it a different way. Share it with us. Let us know, okay? Don't forget to click subscribe. We want everybody subscribed so you can follow along with our journey, and I am super happy to be sharing with you. I cannot wait for the next video. Okay, so be on the lookout. The next video is gonna be something that I have been wanting to do for a very, very long time, and I've just never done it, and I'm super excited about it. Um, so if you have your own chickens and you have your own eggs, you're gonna wanna check back um, for the next video. Hopefully I will have that up sooner rather than later now that I am feeling better. So thanks for joining me in my kitchen. Go make some bone broth and let me know how it goes for you.